China accounts for roughly one fifth of global AI investment. In 2021 alone, it spent over $17 billion. All told, Chinese investment in AI is predicted to reach over $38 billion by 2027. And yet, there are no serious consumer AI products coming out of China to speak of. There is no Chinese chat GPT, there's no Chinese stable diffusion, and any products that are coming through seem to be copycat products of the innovation that we've seen in the USA. So where is the money going? How does the country's notoriously paranoid government plan on keeping tabs on all of this investment? And crucially, how is it likely to play out for the rest of the world? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. The first thing to know is that despite the immense brain power, ingenuity and endeavor amongst the Chinese business population, the way China deals with regulating tech compared to the West could not be more different. In 2020, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, cracked down on its biggest technology giants, companies including Tencent, Didi, Alibaba, and they did this by taking what's become known as golden shares in those private companies. These shares gave the government board seats on the country's greatest innovative firms, meaning they had a much greater degree of insight and control. They're now hoping to do the same thing with AI technologies like large language models. Last year, the party mandated that any company that creates algorithms that make recommendations or can influence people's decisions have to register with the government. Now, that definition obviously could mean any kind of algorithm. Uh, it could be a social media network all the way up to a complex large language model. But the censorship doesn't stop there. There has also been a crackdown on AI video and towards anything that creates pessimism about the Chinese economy. The government has issued rules requiring all AI generated content to uphold socialist values. One rule also requires the manual testing of at least 4,000 subsets of the total training data, and at least 96% of these must qualify as acceptable according to a list of 31 safety risks. Most of these are going to be to do with being in support of the government or being critical about socialism. All of this, of course, means far less experimentation, which is the lifeblood of innovation itself. Centrally planned economies tend to struggle to innovate in line with consumer demands. Rather, they tend to over-index on ideas that the state likes while under-indexing on the areas that market signals tell them they should focus on. Classic example of this, of course, being the Soviet Union's collectivization of agriculture, which was intended to fast forward rapid industrialization, which it did achieve, but, it came at the expense of the average Soviet citizen, particularly in Ukraine, which suffered a widespread famine. Modern day China is, of course, not the Soviet Union, and it's not typically thought of as an entirely centrally planned economy. But things like the tech crackdown in 2020, the advent of golden shares, which give the government all of this extra access into private companies, and this state regulation of AI, all are starting to give the impression that China may be moving further and further down the road towards a fundamentally centrally planned economy if it's not there de facto already. So what is China investing in? It's clear that they are not super keen on going down the road that the USA has gone down, creating all of these consumer products that have been exploding in popularity. And that's probably because it's too difficult to predict the outcome. Uh, authoritarian regimes tend to prefer order over chaos because it helps to maintain ideological conformity. But the Chinese economic miracle has in many ways been made possible by the country's ability to mix just the right amount of free market capitalism into its state philosophy. Its essential pact with the Chinese people is that in exchange for their unwavering support, they get continued growth and improving GDP per capita over time. To improve GDP, you have to improve growth. And to get growth, you have to have some degree of free market economics. So how does China expect its significant investment in AI to pay off? Well, according to Stephen Rolf of the Digital Futures at Work Research Center, who was recently quoted in The Economist, much of it is going into enterprise AI. That is to say, AI for big business. Relatively lax regulation on businesses, many of which 
have some degree of government control or oversight via those golden shares has the effect of channeling capital and labor away from things like consumer chatbots and towards machine learning for business, according to Rolf. Now, in my view, this strategy may actually be quite a smart one. Consumer chatbots in the West are trained primarily on the vast open internet, but this is gonna become increasingly difficult as the private companies that own all of that content are starting to realize its value and they're starting to put a premium on it. So China's promotion of what's been dubbed data exchanges may actually be quite prescient. These government controlled channels allow businesses to trade data, things like power consumption or factory outputs or financial transa transactions can all be housed in a kind of public commons which is accessible to any company that wants to pay for the data in order to build AI products. Now, of course, the government's watchful eye has access at pretty much every level. So the company board via the golden shares, the models through the legislation that we've already discussed, and then of course the data itself, which is being traded on these government approved exchanges. But business is not the only area that China is focusing on. According to Scale AI founder Alexander Wang, China is currently outspending even the mighty USA on AI for defense. It also over-indexes against the rest of the world in direct investment in transportation, security, biometrics, all areas that are, of course, linked either directly or tangentially to defense. Now, it tends to make these kind of investments either through subsidies to organizations like China's Artificial Intelligence Industry Alliance or so-called government guidance funds. These are public-private investment funds that the Chinese government uses to infuse capital into strategic priority sectors like AI. One analyst has described this kind of emergence as an ecosystem of commercial enterprises supporting military civil fusion. So in practice, these technologies probably won't be hugely different from the type of defensive technologies that are being developed in the West. It's things like unmanned intelligent combat systems, enhancing battlefield situational awareness and decision making, conducting multi-domain offense and, de and defense, and facilitating advanced training simulation and wargaming practices. So is China on the verge of leaving the West in the dust when it comes to AI? Well, one reason the USA has managed to maintain such technological dominance over the course of many years and decades is that it is an open economy. This makes it far more able to respond to market signals and drives progress incredibly quickly. Decisions are made as close to the source of information as possible, which allows for rapid iteration and improvement. Central planning tends to slow these things down. Having the government's eye on every different data source and model adds friction, which adds time, which means you innovate slower. And having prioritization led by diktat rather than by the market adds restrictions to innovation. But the new rapid rate of data exchange might change some of the parameters that have traditionally held back centrally planned economies. It may be that latency is reduced to such an extent that they are able to begin to iterate as quickly as free democracies. And the intense focus demanded by the CCP could mean that China takes the edge in the industries that they have decided to prioritize, while the West continues to focus on the more immediately profitable avenues such as consumer AI. Only time will tell.